Hi and good afternoon, everyone. I bet you all wonder what I have in my bag. It is the greatest and most important technological innovation of all time. Can you guess what it is? We have all heard that we will need several planets to support our lifestyle and consumption today. I'm going to show you that one planet is enough. Technology can save the planet. Let's look at the bag and uh, the great innovation inside. A computer is a very good guess, but wrong. It is a stone axe. <laughs> when the first stone axe was created three million years ago, it was a huge revolution. It enabled our ancestors to obtain food faster and easier, so they could get more essential nutrition. That in turn made their brain bigger and, and more powerful, which led to even better tools and uh, gradually to the humans we are today. The stone axe was an embryo, the first step on our road from apes to our civilization, which is now filled with all kinds of technology. <laughs> Actually, technology and biology share the same origin when looking back in history. As we can see, there were nothing else than nat natural elements without life on the earth in the beginning. From these natural materials, life slowly developed, uh, becoming ever more complex over millions and millions of years. This all happened thanks to the biological evolution. But uh, natural materials also started another, uh, a different path, the technological evolution. First the stone axe, the wheel, the bicycle, the car, and so on. All kind of technology from medical to IT is subject to evolution. By the way, do you know what dinosaurs and typewriters have in common? <laughs> they, they are both extinct because they couldn't uh, adapt to a changing environment. Competing animals and competing technology took over. The phone has evolved a lot since it was first invented. It has uh, adapted and survived so far. Our ancestors evolved as well. Now we have hands which can be used for better things than climbing trees, holding a phone, for example. So, what has this to do with our ecological footprint? Well, we may think that our ancestors lived in harmony with nature when their only technology was some simple stone tools. But our ancestors never lived in harmony with nature. We have always been fighting it one way or another. Nature is so much more than just picking fresh berries on warm summer days or something like that. Nature also includes malaria, earthquakes, tsunamis and much more. We developed medicine, tools, machines, all kinds of technologies. However, environmental problems are not only caused by nature. Some of them are caused by ourselves. We have the ozone hole, for example. That was caused by um, <coughs> freon gases used in uh, fridges and similar products. But we managed to come up with a solution. Did we consume less fridges to solve the problem? No. So what did we do? We developed better technology, a substitute for the bad freon gases. 
environmental problems have always been solved by technology, not by less consumption. Global population growth and further consumption means an enormous use of natural resources. And that is true. However, I'm still an optimist because in, in technological evolution, there is a clear direction towards using less resources, less materials in, in products. As we can see, the use of uh, material in a laptop has dropped drastically over time. If the weight was 100% when the laptop was introduced to market, it's now only a few percent. And uh, the same goes for TV and for the tin can, the car. It is the same trend. And uh, the driving force behind this is that uh, all companies in the world want to manufacture their products using as little material as possible, because that is how they can make more yes, profit. And this is, of course, saving natural resources and uh, is happening without any uh, political interference. And uh, the same goes for energy. Energy consumption of a fridge has dropped drastically by 95% during the latest decades. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> this is how we should lower consumption in the world. It is not by taking fewer showers. It is not by lowering temperature indoors to 15 degrees Celsius. Instead, we should live a normal life and allow the techno evolution to do its job. Change of lifestyle and less consumption only slows down development of resource saving products. And uh, less consumption also slows down the evolution towards cheaper products. Thanks to high consumption yesterday, now most people in the world can afford a mobile phone. And that is fantastic, because that's saving natural resources in many different ways. And uh, it's also saving a lot of human lives. So, what about global warming? In India, solar power is closing the price gap with coal power. And because of that, India has now cancelled several coal power projects in favor of solar power. And the more solar power is installed, the more prices will drop. So the energy revolution has started. And this is uh, extremely important because use of energy accounts for most of our emissions causing global warming. There is also another revolution going on, electric cars. They are still expensive, yes, but uh, prices will drop thanks to further product development and thanks to the coming mass production. Many natural resources are used <coughs> when producing an e-car today, but that will also change. If you don't believe me, I will show you a slide I showed you earlier. The figure shows what happened to the use of material and, and its battery. So why shouldn't something similar happen to e-cars and their batteries? I think that uh, old car technology and old, old energy solutions, they are like dinosaurs. If they can't adapt, they die. Let, let's put it this way. If technology stopped evolving today, we would need several planets to support our lifestyle and consumption. But technological evolution will not stop. In fact, it's accelerating. 
and one planet will be enough. We don't need to go back to a simple lifestyle. The stone axe is not coming back. Thank you. <laughs>